Welcome to This Organized Life. If you're a mom, wife, or coffee lover seeking advice on how to reduce clutter and reclaim time, look no further than your host, Lori Palau, founder of Simply Be Organized and author of Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For a lot of people, clutter is their dirty little secret, but it doesn't have to be. Each week, we will share practical tips, chat with experts, and provide strategies on how to keep you organized. I hope that by sharing our stories, you feel a little less alone and more empowered to tackle the areas that are holding you back. So let's get started. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life Podcast. I'm your host, Lori Plow. And you guys, this is going to be such a fun episode. I'm just gearing you up already. I'm like hyping it up. Because it's a fun topic, it's a relevant topic, and we've got a great guest for you. So joining me today is my friend and fellow professional organizer, Martha Carroll Stewart. If you guys are longtime listeners, you've heard her on the show before, but I invited her to come back to talk about the topic today, which is 10 of the most common clutter traps, try to say that 10 times fast, and how to avoid them. And I invited Martha Carroll on for a couple of reasons. First of all, she's super fun and I just love having her on and you guys love her too. Um, And she's full of great ideas. And then the other reason is guys, she has a new book out. And so you have to get this. I know this episode is dropping after the holidays. It would have been a great Christmas present, but not just Christmas. It's a great coffee table book, anniversary book, you name it. It's called Southern Chaos. We're going to talk about it. Um, without further ado, let me welcome my friend, Martha Carroll to the show. Well, or back to the show. Welcome. Hi, it's so good to see you. Hello, friend. How are you? Hi, I am. We are great. We are just getting gearing up for the holiday and getting ready. We are headed to Nashville because my experience Christmas gift for my children this year is a trip to Nashville. No Isn't way. that going to be so fun? That is yes. so much fun. Oh, my, my god! My kids are in their 20s. We always do a trip now. Nobody buys anybody presents. That's my rule. I'm like, one child's married. She doesn't need to be buying it, us presents. One child's in college. I just finished. That's my present. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, we have started a couple of years ago, we started this tradition on taking them on a trip the week after Christmas between Christmas and New Year's. And um, it has been it's just been the best time because we get lots of family time and blah, 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 you know. But anyway, that's that's our Christmas. So we're gearing up for that. How are you? I love it. I'm 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 in the throes. I mean, people right now, like, again, we're recording this days before Christmas, (laughs) days and um. I said, we got to get this in. We got to get this episode in for January. So let's do it. This is going to be so much fun. And congrats. Congrats on your book. Before we get into the episode, I tease this out a little bit, but just tell the listeners, like, tell us about the book. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about the book. First of all, it is the only, the only organizing book out there for the Southern home. I'm from Louisiana. I know all about the Southern home. Lisa, my co-author, is from Georgia, grew up in Georgia. So between the two of us, we had all the nicks and crannies covered. And we were just going to write an organizing book. And my sister-in-law said, please make it about the Southern house because I've never seen so many wreaths in my whole life. (laughs) Y'all celebrate everything. And it's so true. We really are. The South loves to celebrate. And we have lots of entertainment spaces and we have lots of wreaths and other things so what we did is we took all those spaces and we combined them in our book but we started in the fall so Christmas was a great present but our book actually starts in the fall and takes you through because fall for the south is the new year football season starts school starts hunting season starts all those things are our beginning so really in the south August is our new year and so we take the all the rooms in your home plus the southern spaces that other people don't have like Mardi Gras bead organizing and we go through the year and then we get to spring we take you all the way from fall to spring and then because it's so hot in the summer we're like go fishing it's too <laughs> you can go. okay so anyway we go from fall to the spring organizing room by room 
with each holiday and the and the rooms coordinate with the holiday like we talk about the guest room during the holiday season and that kind of thing then we get to the end of the book and we're like it's summer it's too hot in the south to do anything but either go to the beach or go fishing so that's how we end the book we're like go go enjoy the summer because your house is now organized love it and i don't have a copy of the book in front of me to show anybody on youtube but you guys it is oh my gosh super super pretty. i do I all do. Right. I'll put, I'll grab it. I, it's right here. Hold on. All right. All right. Grab it for us. So you guys will have to, if you're on watching on YouTube, you can, you can see it. I don't. You don't have it's, it. Okay. No, I right, put well, it in the front office. I put it in the front works. office. Oh, well, it's okay. it is so all beautiful good. too. It it's all good. All right. Now let's, we're going to link to where people can buy it, all the things. So we'll have that at the end, but let's, okay. Now that we're done all of that, let's dive into <laughs> the topic at hand which is clutter traps. We're here in January. And as much as, you know, like we're all trying to just figure things out, like clutter traps happen all year round. As you know. Yes. Yes. And so I thought it would be fun to just go through like 10 common areas that people tend to struggle with. And A, you guys are not alone because a lot of times we feel like we're the only ones that are struggling with these in these areas. You're not. Um, and we're going to each kind of just share kind of what our own tips experiences are on how to kind of keep those areas clutter free. Sound good? Sounds good. Let's go. Okay. First topic. I'm going in with a biggie. Laundry. Oh, laundry. It is every client's nightmare. Every client I have hates laundry. We all hate laundry. I hate laundry too. And what we do is for me, it is a daily chore. You have to, you have to do your laundry every day. Uh, time out. I know. Move that down. Move it down it, a little bit. It's, I feel like it's in your way. Okay. It's touching my lip and then, uh, uh, and then I'm here. <coughs> <coughs> Goodness gracious. This is going to take us three hours. I know. It's fine. I mean, it's. <coughs> okay. Here we go again. Okay. Laundry. Yes. Okay, most people use it as throw pillows. <laughs> they they do. They throw it on their sofa. They throw it on their bed, and it sits there. And then they have to move it to sit down. If you, you just have to set a timer and get it done. And if you do it, if you do it that way, if you set a timer, get it done. Give yourself fifteen minutes. Fold the laundry, put it away. Then you're doing fifteen to thirty minutes of laundry every night, and it just makes it so much simpler instead of a Saturday of five baskets. I agree. I, I, and I know that there's not a one size fits all, but mm -mm. the most people, and I know there are the exceptions to the rule, but most people that say I'm going to dedicate Saturdays or whatever day of the week to laundry day. If something goes sideways, then you are completely backed up, but keeping it on that ongoing pattern, like a little bit each day or whatever it is, um, makes it flow so much easier. Also, Lori, if your kids are over 12, they should be doing their own laundry. Stop Amen. doing your children's laundry for them because they need to be adults and grow up and learn how to do laundry. And if they, if when we had, our children were teenagers, everybody had a day. So one day a week, everybody that's had a day. Bit. That's what well, that's that's I did. <laughs> and it just works so much better that way because you're, everybody's not fighting on the machine for Thursday night before the weekend or on Saturday or on, we had a, everybody had a day. That's when you got your laundry done. And if you have little ones, you could also have a day for them, a day for you, you know, you schedule that, put it on your calendar as this is the day that I'm doing laundry for this, re, you know, for this person or whatever, but scheduling, it's very important. Yeah. I also think another laundry tip that we use, and again, it kind of plays in with what you just said is we had separate hampers for everybody. Like Josh's and my stuff is together, but the girls each had their own hampers because it took the decision fatigue, especially having two girls, like you had a boy and a girl. So it made it easier, but I had two girls that were sort of similar in sizes. And so you're like, whose underwear is this? Whose underwear is that? And that all that mental decisioning slows mm -hmm. down the process. Mm -hmm. And so by knowing that, oh, this is a whole basket of, you know, Logan's laundry, I can just do it mindlessly, put yes. the basket in her room and let her put it away. 
yes. when she was younger and I was doing it for her. So right. for me, it helped me streamline it by keeping it separate as opposed yep. to being like, let's just have one common hamper because then it's like, okay, wait, who's is this? Who's is that? And then mm-hmm. something inevitably gets put in the wrong person's drawer. And it just, again, from the ease of, I always, you know, I come back yes. to ease of retrieval. Ease of retrieval. Let if it, look, happen. here's the thing. If it's not easy, and I say easy loosely, if sure. it's not easy, people aren't going to do it. Yep. If it takes, you know, there's not, there's not a whole lot of our clients who are like, oh, I love to file fold my t-shirts. No, <laughs> nobody is doing that for fun. I mean, seriously. So I mean, they are like, killers, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Well, maybe, hey, I don't even fold my underwear. I throw them in the bin. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't fold, yeah. I don't fold my underwear. I'm like, you're putting it on who sees wrinkles, whatever. It can just yeah. go in the bin. Make keep it simple, people. Heard it heard it here first, people. Okay. <laughs> What's next? All right, we're going again. Another biggie. Mail. The mail. <sighs> don't even walk in your house with it. I go straight to my recycle bin. I get all the trash out. I take the bills and whatever else you need or any correspondence and I go inside. Mike has a pile. I have a pile, it goes in that pile. And then when I do bill day, you take the, the, the bills and you get them done. But yeah, junk mail. Most people have junk mail. Most most bills are paperless these days. So stand at your recycle bin and get rid of get rid of it. Yeah, and I mean, my, my mail tips are very similar. I mean, again, I try to, as I'm walking in from the mailbox, just going, okay, this is trash. This is going right in the recycling bin. But then anything that I do bring in, first of all, I open the envelope. I don't leave the envelopes closed. Even if I'm not going to take action on it, even if I'm not going to pay the bill, if Mm -hmm. I know it's a bill or whatever it is, I will open it up and I have a Action file, an so action file, there, yeah, right. Yeah, or that's where my a, bills are in my it action be, file. Hey, you could call whatever yep. you want, um, but those are so that way I see exactly what it is. When you have just stacks of, if you're, if we're talking to somebody that's that this stacks is stacks of unopened mail, stacks of unopened mail that is stressful because you mm-hmm. don't know what is behind door number one, door number two. Just open it up and fi- and like Look, see what it is because I a lot tell of my clients this. garbage. I tell my clients, hear my voice. Do not sit that stuff on your kitchen counter. It is, you might as well just like, mm -mm, you're done. Once it hits that counter, it never gets touched again. Handle it immediately. Yep, I agree. I agree. And we're not going to dive into filing because that's separate, but filing is a whole other issue. More people waste time filing stuff that they don't need to file. So- a thousand percent. And, and most yeah. stuff is paperless these days. You can get your statements online. You can get all that online. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking I'm with things you. Things that you file are going to be like, I mean. Do you own a filing cabinet? I have only a portable filing cabinet. Yeah, me I too. Like, yeah, I got rid of it. No, I don't yeah. have it. Yeah. We don't need no. them anymore. Yeah. I mean, even your medical records where I have a health file, like mm-hmm. everything's. Everything's electronic. Mm-hmm. I know. Crazy. Okay dishes okay that's another thing like the kitchen's dirty the dishes go in the sink no no don't put them in the sink that's like a dead zone go straight rinse them dishwasher get it done immediately after breakfast lunch dinner the minute the dishes hit the sink you're compiling the problem is what happens that once you know you put breakfast in there and then lunch goes in there and then dinner goes in there and then it's such a big task it takes too long so you've just compiled your problem instead of doing i mean you know we were a family of four dishes took us 10 minutes and we had a we had shifts so like mike and riley were cooking reed and i would clean and so while I'm loading the dishwasher and rinsing things off and scrubbing pots, he's wiping down counters, he's wiping the table. And again, you're teaching them responsibility to have your children help you do those things. You know, Riley Riley was my, and, and if this was not a gender thing, this was a Riley liked to cook. So right. she and Mike loved to cook together. Reed did not like to cook, so he helped me clean. But had it been the other way and Reed liked to cook, he could, he could cook too. Um, so, it just, 
it just makes it so much easier to teach your children these responsibilities because now I'm regretting not sending Reed in the cooking zone because he um he makes mac and cheese and ramen noodles <laughs> but he was never interested so but yes there's time there's always dishes. time there's dishes time. but yeah do them immediately yeah and for me it's um, also the two minute, just subscribe to the two minute rule. If you could do something in under two minutes, mm -hmm. just do it because something inevitably that you could do in under two minutes that you let pile up is now going to take you 10 times as long. Mm -hmm. So if you let all of the dishes pile up until the sink is bubbling over, now this has become a project. Now this is going to take a little bit of time, but if you can just, like you said, rinse it, stick it in. And even and if you don't have a real. dishwasher, you could still wash your dish really quickly. Let's be real. If it's not attractive to you in that moment, it's not going to be attractive to you three hours later when everything's hard and crusty. So I mean, seriously, so, so fair. And if you are, um, if you are cooking and you are like, I clean as I go also, which mm -hmm. makes the whole cleanup with dishes, like if a pots and pans, a whole lot easier, a whole lot easier because I'm just cleaning as I go. So, mm -hmm. okay. Moving into a zone that you and I have not touched personally in a while, but it's toys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know, I was a kindergarten teacher. I know. So I do believe that less is more when it comes to toys. And I will tell every parent out there, sit on the floor of your child's room or playroom and look around. Is that enticing for you to play with if there's piles of toys in every corner? That's the reason they're bored with so many toys. Mm -hmm. it, it might be fun for you and exciting for you to have to bring home this nice, exciting toy that flashes and beeps and does whatever. I, I, most children need cardboard boxes and a box of markers. <laughs> Yeah, I, there is. There's staples. There's staples. I believe every child needs blocks, blocks. Every child needs a pretend play item like a kitchen or a baby doll or some type of pretend play. And that might be a big, a big Amazon box that could be pretend play. But I do believe that there's staples that every and then you need embellishments or what I call them. That's like a little small container of dinosaurs, a little small container of farm animals and those things because they build with the blocks. And they do all the imaginary play. But part of being a kid is problem solving. And if you're giving them all these toys that they push a button and have results, they're not learning to solve problems. Okay. I, I you know, I could go on this for an entire podcast. So I will stop there. I know. I was I like, stop I, I feel like I triggered you. But yeah. <laughs> I think, I think the, the, just yes again to all the things. Um, One of the things I, I have advocated for, and I know you do as well, is really making the cleanup, the cycling in and out, because toys, especially when your kids are young, they're going through different stages very quickly. And if you're a parent with multiple kids, you've got kids that, you know, it could be from a newborn to a 10 year old, you know, and really running yep. the gamut. And so staying on top of it is really important and it's exhausting, right? Like it, it, like I get it. It's exhausting, It is, but it's, it's for a season people. It is for a season. And the more that you can, again, just get in that ritual of saying, okay, we know we have a birthday coming up. We know we have Christmas coming up. We know we have some other thing that there's going to be another influx of things. Take, doesn't have to be a lot of time, take time and in, include your child in the process ask them what they're playing with, ask them what they're not playing with. If you're going to pull it away for the other child and the child's not ready for it, like if you have the luxury of having a space, like I had the, the, you know, to grow into, just like you have to grow into clothes, you have to grow into toys. So for parents mm -hmm. that are like one kid outgrew it and, but the other one is ready, one. Yeah. take it out of there. Only yep. have that current real estate, just like we do with clothes. Just like toys. clothes. If you're not using it, get it out of the the prime real estate. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And contain things like stuffed animals are always such a huge problem. I always say get a laundry hamper and that gives you a boundary. And when the laundry hamper is full, sorry, we got to get rid of some before we can add new. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and again, invite your kids into the conversation. I know sometimes it seems harder, but if you are teaching them that, it then becomes second nature for them as they get older and they learn how to make those decisions. It gives them a sense of control. For sure. For sure. So um, I mentioned toy. I mean, I mentioned toys. I mentioned clothes. 
um, that's going to be our next clutter trap. So clothes are a big thing for people. And we're just coming off the heels of Christmas, Hanukkah, all the things where I'm sure a lot of new things showed up in people's closets. So I find, and, and, Tell me if this is what you find as well. I yeah. find clothes become a problem because people don't hang their clothes back up. They throw them on the chair or in my case, sometimes it's the bench, but they get thrown there because they're not quite ready for the dirty clothes, but mm -hmm. you don't want to take the time to hang them back up because, you know, I've worn them once. Well, my thing is, if they're clean enough to wear again, why are you not putting them back in your closet? Yeah, I could see that. It's uh, yes, I could totally see that. I see it with my girls I and mean, you know, I'm trying to throw them shade, but I do. I mean, my oldest doesn't live with us anymore, but I see that, you know, when they come home, that's, they still in their yes. 20s. Yes. Their stuff on the floor. And I do it too. And the busier I am, the more mm -hmm. clothes land on the bench because I'm trying on different outfits. There's a, there's the other trick. Get out your outfit the night before and you're not trying on so many things in the morning that you don't have time to put away. So at night, if you do that at night and you get your clothes out the night before, you're trying on things, but you have the time at that point to hang them back up and put them away, what you're not wearing, those things that you didn't choose. So yeah, one of my one of my big things is I always try to tell our clients and practice it in our home as well is don't fill your drawers or your closet, your, your rods, whatever, to the max. You want to have margin because you need to be able to shop your stuff. And if mm -hmm. you have a drawer, and this happened to me with t-shirts, like I sleep in t-shirts and, you know, you see, I work out in t-shirts. Like I have a lot of just, you know, beat around shirts. And my t-shirt drawer was getting a little crazy. And even Josh said it, and I had to go through it. <laughs> And say, okay, I'm not really wearing this one anymore. I don't need this one anymore. Mm -hmm. And again, not unlike the toy bin, this is the defined space. And I mm -hmm. know I can comfortably fit whatever that magic number is. 10 shirts, 15 shirts, 20 shirts, whatever it looks like, mm -hmm. you know, and say those, that's the boundary that I'm working in. And once I go beyond that, then I can't find what I'm looking for. And right. So what's the point right. of having and it? And then it, it's so crammed. And then that makes putting away clothes more tedious. And it's also an adherence to your laundry because you don't want to go put your things away because it's difficult because you're having to move things around. And again, the more steps you put in a process, you're most likely not to do it. I agree. Okay. Yep. Let's move, move through the house and we're circling back to the kitchen. Oh. And I'm doing, I'm doing kitchen gadgets. Okay, so what do you mean by gadgets? Because, you know, I am married to a cook and I gave birth to a cook. Okay. I do not cook myself. So when okay. you talk gadgets, are we talking Instapot or are we talking like a fancy, no. like? I'm talking about like all the little things that go in a drawer. So uh, not like, like you have, you know, four your different zesters. Your zesters, your peelers, your, um, you know, four different yes. types yes. of like mm -hmm. ways that you can crush an a garlic, <laughs> you know, like all yeah. of those things. Um, okay. Like Where do you keep yours? Oh yes. The zoodles. So I have a, we have a, a decent sized kitchen. So I have, mm -hmm. a, I'm fortunate that I have drawer space. So I have a dedicated um, kitchen gadget drawer. So the first thing I think is regardless of the size of your kitchen, um, get some sort of organizer to section off the different gadgets so that you can find them a lot. I can't tell you, and I know that you feel this way as well, or I'm sure you feel this way as well. You go into people's houses and you open up the gadget drawer and it's just one big vomit of spoons and spatulas. Yes. And yes. Well, and one of the things want. we do when we organize, we teach people prep, cook, serve. Most of those gadgets are in the prep zone. Mm -hmm. So we get a drawer in the prep zone. M most people have enough space to have a prep zone drawer. Now, if you have a lot of bulky tools that won't fit in a drawer, mm -hmm. then I would suggest getting a bin and putting the bin in a cabinet so that you can pull the bin out on the cabinet to find what you need. That that was my solution for smaller smaller kitchens. When you don't have a lot of drawer space, put all of those bulky gadgets in a bin and put the bin in the cabinet. 
And then you're pulling the bin out by its handle. See my bins? And you mm -hmm. pull it out by the handle, and then you can find what you need in that. Yeah, so, I used to. I'm sorry, God. No, no, no. Know. That's that's just been our solution. I, I'm like you. I redid my kitchen, so I have a nice, pretty drawer, and they're all laid out pretty. Um, but yeah, that's so bins or drawers. So I am a cook. I love to cook, but I also don't think you need a gadget for every little thing. I am, you know, and I've, I've gone through like buying the zoodle thing. And then I'm like, you know what? I don't really like this. Like, so a lot of times I'll buy something cause it's a novelty and I'll use it. And then I'm like, this isn't really all it's cracked up to be, or I'm not using it as much. All right. What's your I favorite want. gadget? What's your favorite one that you I mean, use I don't all even the time? Know what, I don't even know what. I, I don't, I'm like boring. I use like a knife, and a peeler. Do you know what we use all the time that I never thought when I bought it, I thought it was fun and, but, and it's bulky. So I have to like okay. navigate where it goes. The apple core slicer thing that you put the apple on and you spin yes, the yes, handle. Yes, I used to have it I got it because I didn't want to have to store it. So. Well, it's, it's a pain to store, but we use that one all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you do. Well, yeah, that's good we that do. you, that's, that's good that you use it. Yeah. And so for me, that's the other thing is like, you know what? I used to have, you know, a, a special apple thing to, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to peel it with a knife. Right. So for me, right. it was my space was more important to me than having than that gadget. every little gadget to match every. Well, if you get thing. too many gadgets, do you even remember that you have all those Probably gadgets? Not. I mean, I think, I think I'm with you. I think that now, Riley Stewart may not agree with this, but I think all the gadgets, a lot of them overlap each other and they you can do. get a lot done with one gadget or just a kitchen knife. You don't yeah. need so many gadgets. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you're using it once a year for Christmas, then it, is it really worth storing in your kitchen space well, if that's you're the using other, it once a year? That's the other thing. If you do have a gadget, like let's say you bake a lot of apple pies and you want that apple core slicer. And it is big, but you only use it seasonally. It doesn't have to it live goes, in the kitchen, people. No, it can live in the holiday bin. Yes, it can. Or in your I, overflow, I have a back stock pantry in my basement with other oh, seasonal Don't have things. basements. See, we don't have basements. Yeah. That's so nice. No, mine go. I actually have a whole thing of kitchen things, like the Christmas cookie cutters and things like that. They go in the holiday bin in the attic. I love it. I love it. Okay. This is, this is a trigger for a lot of people and because it's very emotional and that's books. I think Ooh. books for a lot of people. Now, I feel like you go in kind of one camp or another. You have people that are like, I don't really read. This is a non-issue for me. Um, or but I do everything on my Kindle or my audio books. Love their books. Mm -hmm. I'm married yeah. to Mr. Josh Palau is like that. A, um, I say you're going to have to save your money somewhere else in another piece of your house, and you're probably going to have to build a library. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing. I, I mean, books books for those true book lovers, are that's a non-negotiable. Yeah, and I, I think that one of the things is, I think it's really important to kind of, again, put them back. Because when you have them all over the place, it's really hard to then find where it is, especially if you want to go look for it. The second thing is real, true kind of book aficionados will jam a book in any nook and cranny mm -hmm. on a bookshelf. They'll turn mm -hmm. it sideways. They'll cover another <laughs> book. They'll do whatever. And then you're not seeing it anymore. Yes. And but here's a quick funny story. So we do have a library in our, we did these built-ins, like a built-in library in our front room in our house. And I made it like very pretty. So there's a lot of space in between. Um, it's not like book, 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 book. Right. And right. Josh Palau thought that when we had this built that all of his books, cause we already have. Two he book thought houses, they were all going to thought it was all. And I was like, Oh no, 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 no. This is going to be like pretty. And oh. so we are going to have books. So um, I do make him periodically go through the books and he does like, and he, he likes a hardback. He likes the mm -hmm. whole thing. Does, is he a rereader? Like he'll read the same book a couple of times. Occasionally, but not usually. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and he likes to support local. So he'll buy like from our local bookstores and mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole thing. Um, but again, I think books are for me, 
I always say if there's stuff that you know that's dated, like let's say you bought a book that is about uh, computers and it's five years old, that book is irrelevant. So Mm -hmm. get rid of it. Almost like Mm -hmm. treat it like an expired food. Like go through the things um, that you know don't have like a a value anymore. Right, right. Um, (coughs) Kids books. Give them if you if you your kids are grown. I kept my kids' most favorite ones and put them in their like growing there's up. There's the there's the kids' books that your kid that you read over and over and over again, and your kids like recite the words because they loved it so much. Those are the ones I kept. I did not keep all of them, and I, you donate like that's the books that can go to the Better Women's Program and the homeless shelters because they're coming in there and they need. You know, they need the books. We also used to donate to a used book sale where all the money would go towards a nonprofit in town. And so there might be something like that in other people's towns where you can get a book and uh, or donate your books and then the money goes towards a nonprofit. I love it. Okay, moving right along. How about electronics? Oh, that's, you know, I'm not a tech girl. (laughs) Okay, I'll take the lead on this one. Yeah. So I just. You can take the whole thing on this one. (laughs) Okay. So here's my thought. And again, we're talking big, broad stroke pictures, right? So electronics. We're talking, um, in my mind, I'm thinking computers, phones, chargers, video game consults, like all of that. That's kind of in my mind what I'm defining as electronics, just so we can all like have a picture in our mind. And, you know, I like to curse out Steve Jobs from the grave because every time they do some sort of Apple update, you have to change Oh, right now. And then your battery dies in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you have to, but you have to buy a whole new cord. So we have old cords, new cords. Every computer takes a different charger. Mm -hmm. And it's, first of all, no, it's not fun to want to organize that. So it no. just winds up because it's not, and it's not always. And you're easy. so afraid to get rid of them because you might need it. You might need that cord. Yeah. So I think it's, it's worth the time. If you are a family that has a lot of stuff, like I have a client who's got multiple kids. They all have a lot of different things. And so okay. I, I spent the time and granted they had the luxury of having me and my team. Not everybody has a team of professional organizers that can come and do this. Right. But we went through and I literally, and you could do this in a bin. I did it in Ziploc bags, people. Like it was not expensive and fancy. And I put it in Ziploc bags and I had those like little cord wraps that you can buy yeah. like on yeah. Amazon. And I said, this is for this type of phone. You know what I mean? Like these are these cords. These right. Are these right. Cords. And oh, so- I've done that. So yes. I, I don't even know the name of the cords. The client I was working with knew the name of all the cords. So right. we were like, this is the USB port box. This is the, we exactly. did the same thing. Yes. I don't know the name of them all, but yes. Yes. But you, we, could, you could do them in a clear shoe box thing, also. Here's what I did. What? I knew the cords that we used. Mm-hmm. I got rid of the rest. I well, threw them if, away. Well, because that's if we the get thing. a computer that we can't find the cord for, I'm not going to dig through that box anyway. I'm probably just going to get online and order the cord. Well, that is so true because we have a we had a bin in our basement called cords and cables. And I told Josh, I was like, you need to go down and see if there's anything in here that's that you want to keep because I'm going to get rid of this bin because mm-hmm. I will never go down here and, and look for something. Bin. You know what? Here's yeah. my suggestion with the cord bin. Okay. Get some duct tape, tape it closed, write the year that you taped it closed and see if you open it. <laughs> time capsule. The time capsule of cords. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it. I love but it. I mean, seriously, we don't use those cords. You never go into that cord drawer. I know. I did. I, I threw them all away. I kept the chargers that I knew that people, everybody had. And then I asked my hat, you know, I'm an Apple girl. Mike's a Dell, Mike's a Dell guy. So I had to check with him about a few things, but, um, but yeah, I threw them all yeah, away. If and you I, know, now they're yes, in a if small you, if, little tiny thing. Yeah. It's so yeah, nice. Exactly. Um, okay. We're in the home stretch people. We've got two more. All right. Beauty products. So oh, I think you need to know the expiration dates. So get a Sharpie when you get your products in, put a date on the back. And then, you know, the it's going to expire. 
I like I that. A, I have a fun story. Go ahead. I love stories. My mother had, I think it was eyeshadow or something, and she was so proud that she had had that eyeshadow since she got married. I'm like, Mom, that's just gross. <laughs> well, I have a story I, that's that? similar. So my bestie, Michelle, um, her parents live in Florida, and this was like years and years ago when they first moved to Florida. And uh, my niece and nephew were, they were little and they went down to visit her and they flew in a plane. So they didn't bring sunscreen because, you know, you can't bring big thing. But she was like, oh, I'm going to stay with my mom and whatever. So she gave, pulled out sunscreen. And for any of my like local Philadelphia people, you'll understand what thrift drugs is. It's a drugstore that is no more. Right. But that's what it right. used to be called in the right. 80s. Right. Thrift right. drugs, people. Yep. Okay. It's since been bought by like Rite Aid and whatever, but so she it's went down no longer and she was like, Michelle's like, Oh, do you have the sunscreen? And she whipped out a thing of like copper tone and the, from the sticker. And it said from thrift drugs. And she's uh -huh. like, mom, mm -hmm. she's like, Michelle, it's fine. It's and fine. Was, it's fine. It's fine. I said, you're even my mom. I was like, you're going to get an eye infection. She goes, Martha Carol, I've been using this for so many years. I've nothing's ever happened yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yes, expiration date on beauty products. Yes. Do not, even if you're a beauty product junkie and you're like, oh, I love new makeup, but I love new cleansing products. Definitely, definitely, definitely cycle them. Out. Okay. Yes, you have to. And here's another thing. Unpack your makeup bags when you travel because you're ordering new makeup or skincare or whatever because you can't find it and it's in your travel bag and if you're not traveling every three months or every week that is expiring and you're wasting all that money so empty your travel bags oh i like it there you go all right last one we're taking it out of the house and into the car people oh common clutter trap and i can't tell you how many people in my hot mess minute when I say, where are you the most organized and where are you the hot mess? And how many people say their car? But yeah. Well, and for me, it's, I always ride around with donations in my car. Like I'm every day I'm getting a client's donations. And so I'm bringing them. So I constantly feel like my car is full and a mess, but here's the weird thing. I went from um, a, an SUV type car to a Jeep and the Jeep center console is tiny. You can't put anything in it. So I'm still on the struggle bus with the car organization because I I can't do a trunk organizer because the back is always loaded with donations every day. And I can't hardly fit anything in my center console. So I'm still looking for solutions for my car organization. Right now, it's under the seat. Well, and I and think zipper bags. And I think it depends on kind of the season of your life that you're in and how you're using your car. Like That's for people also like true. you and I who use our cars a lot for work, like it is mm -hmm. really like an extension of our business because like mm -hmm. you said, we need to have space to bring product, to haul donations. Right. So that we're looking at it through a different lens than a mom who is like, okay, I need to keep a bag of also tricks true. in my kids and I need to have, I like, need to snacks. have snacks. Yes. I need to have yes. snacks. I need to have a, maybe like a little portable garbage so I could put stuff in easily. Yes. Furs or whatnot. Um, I used to keep what I called the bag of tricks where I had like yes, the wipes and wipes and all that in there. Yes. So I think it's very different. There is a chapter on that in my book, by the way. There is. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> of how you're using your car, you know, and what it is that you know, how well, does your, and your car need to function for you. And your car is a toddler mom versus an elementary school mom versus a middle school mom versus a high schooler mom. All different things need to be in your car. But so what, okay, let's think about this. What are the staples that are always in car organization? Wipes. Wipes, umbrella. Yeah, umbrellas. Um paper towels or some sort of something to wipe up. I, I used to keep rag towels. You know, those little workout towels people give yeah. out. I yeah. kept those little workout towels cause they were small, but it, you know, mm -hmm. when spills happened, it was easy. Um, Ziploc bags, because there's always something that is gross that you don't want to sit down in the car. Like it might be wet clothes. It might be whatever makes, they make great vomit bags too, for those that get car sick. <laughs> 
But yes, so Ziploc bags. So you could do, uh, and and I did have this when my kids were small. I had a little, I had those latch boxes, and I would keep these things in there, and I kept them in a bin in the back of my car. And it yeah. just made, you know, at one point when my kids were little, it was an extra change of clothes. Mm -hmm. Because in the South, we get muddy. I mean, you know, we're in the South with children, and it rains all the time. And it never failed. Somebody was going to fall in a muddle bud, a, pu a puddle of mud. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So I think, again, the bottom line is it's spending a few minutes to clean it out. So like how to avoid the clutter trap to me is if you're unpacking the car, and I know sometimes it's crazy because you're unpacking it with the kids and the groceries and there's a lot going on, find time to, if you can't do it in that exact moment, go back in gather the trash, the trash. Yes. The gather trash. the trash, the dirty tissues, the, whatever yep. it is, that's, that's there. And just make a point of it because when you get back in it, you're not going to, you're ready onto the next, right? You're yep. onto the next place, the next to thing on your to-do list. Those plastic grocery bags are excellent to keep in your car because you can right as you get out, just pull a grocery bag out and say, everybody put their trash in the grocery bag. And that's yeah. what we would use to tie up I love and it. get the trash out. I love it. So, yeah. So there we have it, people. There's 10 of our most common clutter traps and things, ways that you can avoid them. So thank you very much. Tell us a little bit about your book. So again, go back in and time out. I'm going to see in case the other one doesn't come through. I want you to okay. repeat that. So okay. We're going to just keep it into this one in case. All right. Okay. So, and I'll All right. let her piece it together. So anyway. So you have this new book out. Give us the overview. What's it all about? I'm okay. for everyone to know. It is um, the only organizing book on the market for the Southern home. And the reason for that is because we in the South do a things a little bit different. You know, now that you've been to visit me, Lori, but we like to entertain and we like to decorate. And so there is a wreath for every occasion. You know, forget the big holidays. We celebrate the little ones too. And we have Mardi Gras. Everybody has a closet full of Mardi Gras gowns. What do you do with them? So we address all of those things. But the fun thing I love about our book is that it's good for everybody because not everybody has those Southern spaces. So we do have the, the normal staples in, in there as well. And it starts in the fall because that's when football season starts, school starts, you need to get the kids organized. Um, just everything seems to start in that August, September time frame. So we started our organizing so that you could take this in small bites and go from fall to spring and get your house organized in each space. So it, I think most chapters are no more than three pages and and their pictures and there's categories for each thing of how to categorize their the chaos method is at the beginning it talks about the five steps of organizing and so it takes it so that anybody can get organized with that process um we end the book in the summer where it's hot down here too hot and um, we tell you either go fishing or go to the beach. It's time to take off and enjoy the summer. So you really could get your whole house organized from fall to spring. And um, and we have fun things like some of the things that we address are tailgating. We address um, the Southern Hunter and the hunting closet. So there's some unique things in there that, that you wouldn't, you're not going to find in other organizing books. I love it. I love it. And um, we'll link up to where people can get it because right now, at least at the time it's recording, it's not available on Amazon. It is available in certain local bookstores. But we are reason. online. But you can get it on our website, which oh, is or organizingsouthernchaos.com. Perfect. And of course, we will link up to that um, for all of your organizing Southern book needs. <laughs> <laughs> or if you just need to get your house organized and you're not Southern, you can see how we live down here and also still get your spaces organized. <laughs> There you go. Well, thank you so much. This is so much fun. I always love having you on our show. Um, it's if you're, always fun. If you're new to our show, welcome. Make sure to click the follow subscribe button wherever you're listening or watching. Um, we drop two episodes every week to just help keep you inspired and motivated and cheer you on for wherever you are in your organizing journey. And so 
again, if you're brand new to our show and there's a specific topic that you want to know about, um, just let us know. If you don't want to go through our archives, just be like, hey, do you have something about this? We're pretty responsive. So our team is great. You can shoot us a DM, email us, whatnot. And um, again, we are here to like make 2024 your most organized year yet. So until next week, I am Lori Palau. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, please spread the love and share it with your friends. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure to click the subscribe button wherever you are listening so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, please leave us a review so other people know that our show is worth the listen. You can also find us on YouTube and Instagram at This Organized Like Podcast. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can head on over to our website at simply the letter B, like boy, organized.com, which is filled with tons of resources, including free downloads, checklists, links to our amazing organizing partners, and all of our digital offerings. I'll see you next week for another episode of This Organized Life.